It was Christmas 2020, and I was rooting like crazy. Saskia, Minya, Maddie, Agnes, Olive, Princess Adelaide, a Rapunzel Layla. Pretty soon, I had sharp shoulder pain and had to stop. I started again slowly, but the pain always came back, and I sadly put away my half-rooted projects. I needed to figure out another way to make realistic hair. My attempts at painted hair had improved over time from this to this, and I have Christine Woolley in her tutorial book to thank for that, but I never felt fully in control of the brush, so I experimented with Prismacolors. I collected photos of actual baby hair as well as nicely rooted hair and studied them and practiced, just trying to draw what I see. I'm still practicing and experimenting, but I'll show you what I've learned so far. Okay, enough intro, on to the video. Okay, so I've finished painting these three cuddle heads and um, now I'm going to seal them. Some people have said they have difficulty getting the prismas to um, show up and they've never been a problem the way I do it with the sealer. So I use the Reborn Effect Sealer. Um, shake that up. And then use a little bit of distilled water. So the end of this is a little bit uneven. So I'm going to cut that off so that it's perfectly even. Dip this in the water. Squeeze it out. And let's start with Mickey. on there. And I've got um, Ultimate Fusion Paint on here. 
which has dried for 72 hours. You're supposed to dry it for 72 hours before sealing it. So I did that. Because this will make it so that the prismas will go on nice and easily. Okay. That's little Mickey done. Okay, so when I map the head, I do it very lightly and I noticed that it was hard to even see in the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map this um, unpainted kit. It has problems that I need to fix. So I'm just going to use it like a test head for now and then erase it all so that you can see. And, and I'm going to use a black prisma so that you can see it really well. And I've sealed it so that the prisma will show up. And I, I have to say this, this won't be a great tutorial for mapping. There are better tutorials um, for mapping. There's Sue Ellen's. There, if you look up Custom Doll Baby, she has, a, on YouTube, she has a really good mapping one. Hers was really helpful. I, I took a bunch of screenshots of it at one point and just kind of studied them all. But now I kind of do it my own way. But just as a really basic overview of mapping. Um, so you go to the middle of the head and back to where you want the swirl to be. And I draw one swirl going this way and another swirl going that way. And again, if I was actually doing this on a painted head, I would do it a lot lighter. And I would do it with the, the color that I'm going to be using for the hair. And then with this swirl, we continue the line out and there are, you know, lots of different ways you can take this, but here's just one basic way. Here's another line coming out and what we're doing is making little sections that we're going to follow. Have this maybe come out like that. And this comes out around. Forward and then back around the ear. And then here, right above the eyebrow, it would come and swirl around here. And then Let's see. So I need another line here coming around. It, you can do this so many different ways. Um, just as long as your hair isn't just coming straight down. And I like mine really curvy, so I have it kind of curve around and then curve back to the ear. Um, and then around this side, and around like that, from the eyebrow down. I'm noticing some spots it's not showing up because I didn't put sealer on these places. I, I did put it on the scalp, but I didn't put it right here. So those of you who say it doesn't show up, that is true if you don't have sealer. But all the places with sealer, it shows up. Coming out. And also I would be more careful and probably take my time if I was doing this for real. But just want to show you a quick way to do it. Okay, just now, so that's just a basic mapping. So now we have all these little sections to fill in. So, and it doesn't really matter where you start, but um, 
The next thing that I do is I will lightly fill in the section following following these lines. So this, I'm doing this a little heavy so you can see it, but this is what I would do very lightly. And then the next thing I would do is I would find where the hair would gather. So when it turns, um, the hair, this hair is going straight and it wants to keep going straight, but this, all of this hair is turning so it just has to turn with it. It's not a great way to explain it but let's see. But that's how I picture it. Like all it's all this peer pressure. The all the hair is turning this way. It's like no I don't want to go that way. I want to go straight. No we're going this way. And it's going to curve. And what happens when you have these curves is you get these Y shapes. See how that makes a Y? And for every Y shape that I do, I shade it in at the bottom and make it lighter coming up like that becomes darker at the bottom. And it, it can't just stop here because look at all this hair all squished together. It's got to go somewhere. So it will continue to be dark down there. So each of my Y's, they'll be shaded in the middle down at the bottom and they will also be shaded on the sides. And don't, don't make just a stark line. Make it kind of blend in. like that. And then a lot of the times the Y will have a Y inside of it, especially, you know, these sharp turns. So here's another Y inside of the Y. I'm going to darken the edges and I'm going to shade the middle. And I'll often I'll also in the middle add some darker lines coming out of it like this. Okay. And you'll notice my pencil isn't super sharp. It doesn't doesn't really have to be. Um, you'll see when I do the long version of this tutorial that there are times that I sharpen the pencil. Um, particularly if I'm doing the hairs, the little hairs here, or if I want to end something in a, at a point. Okay, so that's my process. I make the little Y's. Then the other part that I darken is back here where it gathers. So look at all this hair all gathering together, all converging. Well, that's going to be darker too. So I'm going to shade that in. and add some hairs that way. Okay. Um, and then a lot of times I, I see that just by the way I kind of messed up when I was doing the light lines, I ended up inadvertently making little Y's, so I'll, I'll look for those. Here's a little Y here. Shading the middle of the Y continuing the shading down to the end and shading the edge of the Y. Now not all the Ys have to have the same tail length. In fact, you don't really want that. So like here's, let's do this Y where it ends 
really close to the ear, way down here. And some of the shapes are going to be maybe even more like a V than a Y. Like right here could be a V. But, you know, same idea of the shading darker at the bottom and on the sides. Oh, I see what looks like a natural Y coming into this. That would look good. Okay, continue that down, just like that. And then here, I think it needs Y like that. Shading. Continuing down. That's a pretty long tail, I'm gonna add. Add another little Y. And this wasn't really a Y, this was just, you know, a blank spot that needed more of a C shape, I guess. Okay, so that would be one section. And I often kind of go back and just shade a little more, make sure it's looking nice and even. And then I move on to another section. And if the section is a little too daunting, to like, ah, oh, there's too much space, then I'll kind of cut it in half and do a little section at a time. Um, and I'll use these, I'll use these lines, the mapping lines, um, as edges of the Y's, since they're already there. Okay, so that's the basic how to. Um, when you get to places like around the back, uh, the hair kind of gathers into a point. I didn't do a great job mapping it here, so let me show you the eraser. This is an, a Prismacolor kneaded rubber eraser. I think I got this on Amazon. Um, so I get a little piece off and erase. A lot of the times it won't erase completely but it's enough that if I'm going to cover it with something else, it's all right. Or I'll often just use this just when I've done something too dark and I want to make it lighter. But that's close enough. All right, so let's say I'm making a point here at the back. So my lines need to kind of follow into this point and then they will kind of echo around the point like that and these hairs are, are, all, are all feeding into the point oops that was not it that was not smart the lines have to follow they can't just poke up. They have to they have to follow where your mapping is. They can't just come out of nowhere. So let's do it this way. So the mapping lines all come and converge. Okay, so then I would come in and I would darken it at the bottom. When you get to the swirl, um Your lines are going to come out this way. They're going to, uh, you're going to have 
kind of backwards Y's, where before the Y was gathering, like here's a gathering Y where the hair comes together. But when you're coming out of the swirl, it's more of the opposite, where the Y, it would come out that way. So you're going to again shade darker where the hair is gathering and on the edge of where it gathers like that. As you're going along, you'll be making more Y's within Y's. So y within a Y. And um, every once in a while, you can. Oh. Beware of any lines that are just poking out like this. They shall have a little bit of shading. Okay, and then when it... At the end of this, now I could have this just... I could have the end of this Y just continue, and, and it does continue, but one thing I could do just for style is I could give it a little bit of a curly cue here. Like that. So I could put some of those throughout. And yeah, just continue going from dark to light. And um, I'll show you how I do the eyebrows. So I kind of, I, I like to turn it to the side and, and adjust the light so that, so I can really see where, where the brow bone is and also feel where the brow bone is. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to tell on this kit. And I want my eyebrows to be right in the middle of that that brow bone that sticks out. I want it to start at the corner of the eye and so I will make sure where that is. So I will very lightly draw a line where I think the eyebrow is. And try to match that on the other side. That was a mistake. Probably doesn't matter because I'm going to be shading that in. Okay. And then I will look at it and make sure that that's where I want it. Because at this point I could still erase it and I could move it up or down a little bit. But that looks pretty good. So I, I saw some eyebrows that were pretty much horizontal on a baby and I was like, great, that is how I'm going to do my eyebrows. Enough of this psh, 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 trying to make it work. No, they're going to be mostly horizontal. So just going to do almost completely horizontal lines. In fact, this would be a point where I do want to sharpen a little bit. I start by just drawing some light lines. 
find where the little mapping lines are. I have a mapping line here. So just drawing light lines. And the lines are a little darker wherever the hair is gathered. So where it's coming out of a spot where it's gathered, I'll make it darker and darker towards the point of the gather. And then when it turns a corner like this, I figure some of the hairs don't want to turn that corner and will kind of go their own way until they get gathered. So that's where where there's a lot of curves I'll make gathered spot and and the gathered spot is like a V and it's or Y and and then it's darker to get towards the point. And my pencil isn't super sharp. This is a dark umber very thin, but it doesn't really need to be super sharp. I'll sharpen it and for when I get to the points, the ends of things, but um, most of the time it's pretty dull just because, you know, these clumps of hair have different sizes of stroke to them. Some are thicker and some are thinner, so um, I'm going to keep it dull sometimes. Okay, so now it's going to curve around back to here. So I'm going to have it have a little Y shape where it curves. And then I'm going to make sure I'm in the magnifying glass. Then I'm going to just darken it. And kind of make it go from dark to light around this curve. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. Let's see. And then here we got to do some stuff. Here's some light lines by the ear. And, you know, be Oh, and also kind of the edge, the sides of this Y, I'll darken. Sides and the middle will be the darkest part. And then, yeah, there's kind of a blank spot between this Y and this Y, so I'm going to make another one right here. Just kind of curve, having, having it come from behind this one. Darken that at the end, and I might make that point here when I sharpen my pencil. Okay, just filling that in a bit. Okay, so let's look at the next spot. Mm. Oh, that was way too far. But that's okay. Whenever I make a mistake, which is a lot, I just turn that into a Y if I have one going the wrong way. So, make that into a Y like that. Also, I never learned to hold a pencil correctly like this. I hold it wrong and that makes it hard to write and it makes it hard to have control of a pencil or a brush um, but I'm learning to kind of work with it that wherever um, wherever I do an off line like if I'm trying to go around this way and I go ah that way then I just go back and turn that into a Y. Just like 
I meant to do it. So let's see. Now this needs to be a little closer to here, so bring it out like that. And then, that's pretty much the basics. Um, and then, you, if you want more contrast, you can just come back to these Y's and make them darker around the edges so that you have a little more contrast. Might do this. You know, and some of these Y's will have Y's in Y's, so here's, here's a kind of fat Y, and maybe it needs another Y within, especially because the hair is turning here, so I think the hair might end up gathering here at this turn. Okay, so that's how his hair is coming along. And I just do that all around the head, um, here's the top where the swirl is, and it's kind of messily mapped out a little bit, but so let's see, curve here. And that is gathering from here, so it's going to be a little darker. Shake that in. Just under the magnifying glass. Okay. Just making some Y's here where the turn is. Especially since I made these lines to map, I'm going to use them as the edge of my Y. Otherwise, that would look weird to have mapping lines just wherever. And this, I think I will kind of make it... Um, I need a sharper pencil for this, so I will sharpen it. I've got this Prismacolor sharpener. Not sure if it's any better than a regular sharpener or not. But, um, sharpen it and do... Okay, so now I have a sharper end this, making that end a little sharper. So now that I have a sharper end, I can come back here, I can make some of these ends sharper if I want. Kind of not quite sharpened. Sharpen these ends while I've got a nice sharp edge. Sharpen right there. And another thing that I like to do when the edge is sharp is um, do these very light, thin lines that come from above the brow and to the temple because I want those to be very thin little hairs. So that's when I'll do those. You barely even see some of them. Okay, so that's how this guy is coming along. Um, Another one I am working on is Andy. 
and I am trying to make hers very very faint very kind of barely there hair I don't know if you can even see it it doesn't show up very much um, but the key to the barely there hair is it's going to be darker over by the ears and darker on top but then not very dark at all here um, and dark around the back too by the neck so I do want to darken and maybe gather a bit but since it's barely their hair there's not going to be a lot of hair to gather just a little bit but I'm not going to have as much of the Y's and V's so I've made it kind of swoopy around here And just following the lines that I made. And making it darker towards... I'll make a Y here. Maybe a Y within a Y. Just to kind of stand out. Darken this one a little bit, but I'm not going to put a lot of darkness up here. But I'm just pressing very, very lightly to get these very, very light strokes. like that. You can see it near the top. There's a little bit of darker hair where the hair comes together. So I will be working on that. But actually this one is more fun because I like when I can make it swoopy and do some more contrast and darkening. That's more fun for me. Um, and if I'm going to darken like a, a Y up here, I'm probably going to follow it down. Because I figure hair is gathered. There's a bunch of hair here. Well, all that hair has to go somewhere. So it's going to continue to stay gathered as it comes down. Also between the points around the ear, I'll put some little Thinner hairs. Just keep going over it. Or you can add a darker color, but I kind of like the look of one color and then it being kind of darkened. You know, I've added a shadow color but uh, that always looks like too much hair to me. Oh, I like it from color.
doing her life. So, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I mean, as you can see, it it goes on easy. It doesn't smudge on my hand or anything. Very light lines that come around. can barely see them above the eyebrow. Okay. And then darker down at the end where it gathers. Okay, so I have decided I want to make his hair a little darker. And one of the drawbacks of Prisma pencils is you just don't have a whole lot of color choices. And so, and as many of you know that have worked with them, a lot of the browns turn red. So I'm going to darken with a black, very thin. Um, and hopefully I won't regret it. But I'm um, just going to... Well, you know what? I'm going to start back here. I guess I hate it. Just kind of go around the places that are already darker and make them darker still. And I'm just pressing very lightly because this is black. I don't want it to be completely black. I just want to Kind of darken the color that's already there. Oh, that was a mistake, but that's okay. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go over all of these darker areas. Not going to draw new lines in between in the lighter areas. Just going over dark areas. So I will go over all of those and show you the results. And if there's places where it seems like, oh, it, you know, this actually looks pretty blank. Then I'll go back to the brown and fill that in more with the brown. Because I don't want to fill it in with straight black. I only want I only want the black to be on top of where the brown is already. Not by itself. So that I can have kind of a dark brown color. I darken the eyebrows darken the top of the hair and I've also made it thicker both by um, filling in some of these sparser areas with brown and also by adding more Y's because if you look at Andy's hair hopefully you can see that um, there's not a ton of Y's. There's like a few big swoopy Y's. 
because she's got very light hair. There's just not a lot of hair to gather. You know, it's somewhat gathered on the sides, but not a lot on top because it's thinner hair. But I want his to look more thick and to and kind of be this thick curly hair. So this is the part I've been working on. Just kind of going through wherever there's these blank spots and filling it in a bit. Sometimes darkening where the Y's are. And I'll, I'll show you an example of maybe a place that I feel like could use another Y. Let's see. Yeah, like here, it's not super pr pronounced. There's like a little Y here, but it could also come up here. Gather like that. And then all of these Ys kind of feeding into this bigger Y. Ooh, like that. Um, but that's all I'm doing. Just filling in. Doesn't take a long time to do. I don't really have a way that I do it because I don't get smudging, but um, I just kind of jump all over the place. For Andy's barely there hair, I'm going back and slightly darkening areas around the ears. Um, so it's darker on top, it's darker around the ears darker around the swirl and it's darker here around the base around the neck so I'm just darkening certain areas where the hair would gather around the ears I didn't do this spot yet And if you get something a little too dark, you can take a piece of eraser and just erase it slightly so that it's not standing out so much. Okay, so I've finished both the heads, and so I'm going to go back to the Reborn Effects sealer, get some on a little wet sponge, uh, just like that, and lightly pounce it on, and you can see it's not moving it and not brushing it on just lightly pouncing
And they're finished! Thanks for watching! Check out the links in the description for a mapping tutorial and where to buy Prisma Verithins and a Prisma Eraser. I like the Verithins because they stay sharper longer. Follow Palm View Reborns on Facebook to see what dolls I'm creating next. I'm also working on a step-by-step -step video showing how I do eyelashes on open-eyed babies, so be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.